Hey, good afternoon guys. So welcome to my video. Now in this video, I'll be trying to explain how to apply and use the DK Fuller test. Well, first year, DK Fuller test was named after statisticians David Dickney and Wayne Fuller who developed the test back in the late 70s, yeah? And what did they say? Well, their test was used to test whether or not a unit root was present in an autoregressive model. In this, in this example, we're gonna test it with a very basic case using the AR1 model, okay, where Phi 1 is the coefficient of x t minus 1 and t is the time index. And of course, epsilon t is the error term. And most of the time, this follows a white noise process. Remember that the white noise process is, uh, is normally distributed with mean 0 and white noise and um, variance uh, sigma, which is called a sigma epsilon squared. Okay, so this tends to be the white noise. Okay, and, and this is a very useful for stationary property. So, what do we do with this AR1 model? Well, firstly, we want to show that this can be transformed into a DK, into a DF equation, the DK Fuller equation, which involves something known as a, a first difference operator. Well, how do we do this? Well, first things first, let us just um, expand both sides and subtract it by xt minus 1 on both sides, okay? Let's do some kind of mathematics here. So, subtracting both sides by xt minus 1, we should have xt subtract xt minus 1 equal phi 1 xt minus 1 minus xt minus 1 plus epsilon t. Now factorizing terms, if you notice this term here, when you have um, an xt minus xt minus 1, we use something known as the difference operator and this is considered a first difference. We, write, we note this as difference of xt. And over here notice that we both have xt minus 1. Factorizing here, we should get phi 1 minus 1 times xt minus 1 plus epsilon t. And now I'm going to re-parameterize this into a different variable. I'm going to call this pi t, or simply just pi actually. Okay, and what does this tell us now? Okay, so this is going to be called pi, where pi t, where pi equals phi 1 minus 1. And now, we will test whether or not this is zero, and this is the objective of the of the DK Fuller. You know, the whole point is to test whether or not the this is done over the residual term rather than raw data. Okay, and we're gonna see whether there's a unit root. And to know that something has a unit root, we should also recall that phi one. If phi one's one, then this is definitely unit root. In other words, if this is zero, if this is zero, then we know something. Then this is something known as different stationary. And that can be proved. Okay, so let's just rub this out board quickly and then moving on to the main objective. Okay. Okay, guys, we're back. So I, all I did is wipe out the board and put this on top. Now let's consider two more cases, okay? There's in, normally you get a case where you encounter an equation like this plus a drift component or a drifting in the trend component. So what, what am I saying exactly? Well, Suppose we take the drift case, okay? What do we have? We have the same equation here, delta xt. And this time, instead of having this term here alone, we're gonna have something known as phi zero, which is the drift component, plus the rest of this, pi xt minus one, plus the error term. Likewise, we might have something known as a drift plus a trend, which might occur in a graph. And to think of this as a trend, think of, um, a common time series graph except that when it goes crazy it seems to be going crazy towards a certain movement so this that you can see there's some form of linear deterministic trend so in the form of you know y equals mx plus c in this case it'll be this equation is some, some function of t in the form of a deterministic component drift plus we can just call it beta t where t is the trend of the line you see so how do we write this in terms of notation. Well, it'll be the same equation once again, but instead of just having this part here, we incorporate beta t where t is the time trend and it's deterministic, plus the rest of these guys. Okay, so this is simply the basic idea of DK Fuller. Now, finally, let's move on to something known as the augmented DK Fuller and try an actual exam style question. Okay, moving on now from here, I'm gonna wipe the board clean. Okay, so, so guys, Almost there, almost there. 
So look at the next okay, slide. Okay guys, now. we're back. So this time I've shifted the camera to my laptop and this is how the EV's output looks like. Okay, so let's zoom in a bit closer, okay? So what do we have so far? Let's look at the red box first. So initially, we know we're working with a DK Fuller test, augmented DK Fuller test equation and the dependent variable is DX. So notice they wrote DX. In fact, DX actually means the first difference. D represents the first difference and in our notation we use Delta. Almost every notation is Delta, but only EV displays a D. Why did they choose D? Well, you know, it's just how Delta is, I suppose. Maybe you can't rewrite the notation Delta. Anyway, more importantly, let's look at the test critical values above it. So notice that the test critical values are between 1, 5, 10%. So what do we have here? And this ain't from the T distribution or the normal distribution. In fact, this is from the Dickey Fuller distribution. And yes, even Dickey Fuller has his own distribution. So we will be comparing these critical values against the green information over here, which has the variable, the coefficient, the standard error, T statistic, and probability. So let me just um, stop right there a second. Okay, so notice over here, the x minus 1 bar. Okay, so this would be the coefficient value here for this parameter here. So how am I going to write this down? So let's just keep note of this. And this standard error would be the SE standard error of this coefficient here. Okay, so just to recall, and when you do the coefficient over the standard error, in fact, you get a T statistic. You can test it yourself, guys. This over this equals a T statistic. So let's just write this information here. And also know that you do not have a constant term, it's only x minus 1. If we had a constant, there will be a c variable here with a coefficient. We don't have a trend either, t, so there'll be no trend. In fact, we, we got the, the first case equation. So, okay, so let me write all this down. So let's record the value 0 0.0203 and replace. And okay, guys, and we're well. back on the whiteboard. So here we are, straight from the eviews output. We put the variable, the coefficient, the standard error, and the t stat right here. Also know that I got the 5% critical value and I wrote dx representing delta x, the first difference or the change, first change. Okay, so let me write, so, so let's write down the theoretical the definition and recall it. So first we have delta xt equals, in this case, we have the, let's include the drift and the trend. So that we're going to have phi 0 plus, let's call it beta t plus pi xt minus 1, where pi we said earlier was phi 1 minus 1. Is that correct? And uh, doo -doo -doo, plus epsilon t. Okay. Now, as we're estimating this expression, notice that when you copy values from the output, record that the output is only estimates. So all, of the guy, all these guys are just estimates. Okay, so don't think these are the true values. Okay, they're just really good estimates, all of them everything here okay not just t stat so when we define estimates we have to put hats on every single guy so this means that delta xt were hats so the hat represents the estimate phi zero hat plus beta t hat hat for this guy not t t is the trend okay plus pi hat xt minus one plus epsilon t hat now notice from the output that we only got one value the coefficient so this implies that the constant term, which is A in here, is zero, the trend is zero, and the error term is zero too. So according to the output, the only value we have is this one for this guy. Everything's zero. That means that delta xt equals 0 0.001203 xt minus one, and that's it. But that doesn't stop there, guys. So of course, now we need to test whether or not whether or not there's a unit root in xt. So recall that the unit root is simply when um, pi equals 0 or the phi 1 equals 1. Okay, so this is just a representation of phi 1 minus 1. And when this happens to be 0, then we can confirm that this equation is different stationary. Otherwise, it would just be translationary or different type of stationary. Or we can call it a random walk. So let's get to let's let's test the hypothesis right now. Okay, let me wipe, wipe out the board. So, and I'll keep only the main information. Okay, so we got our equation done. Now, what can we say at this point? So let's let's note down the no and the alternative. So the no hypothesis 
implies that pi equals zero and the alternative implies pi is less than zero. So this is a one tail test. Even the T statistic supports it because it works in the negative side of the quadrant. So again, remember we only reject the null if the T statistic, if we if it lies outside the region. So since it's a one tail, we're looking at something like this. And the critical value here will be minus 1.94. So if the value lies over here, then we reject. Okay. So what do we have so far, guys? So the test statistic at the 5% level is this. So we can instantly say that T, the, the test statistic of pi is minus 1.49419 against and normally we would have to do this value. The coefficient, we're going to call this pi over standard error, which is also pi. Okay, and what do we say about these guys? So this value would be this variable over this variable, this over this, which actually equals this. So we don't even need to work it out. And our conclusion would therefore be just to summarize this. Okay. So in conclusion, so notice that this value is probably somewhere here, 0 0.39. So actually, we don't reject the null. So, our, so what we would say here is that we can conclude that this test statistic, that we can conclude that there is no statistical evidence to say that there is no unit root in X. In other words, since we're rejecting the null, there's, basically this is no longer a random walk or different station. So sorry, in other words, um, th this implies that XT is difference stationary. Okay, good. And that's it really. And as we keep it at pi equals zero. And that's it, and it's kind of true because the pi here is roughly equals zero and this confirms it. So our final expression would therefore be, this will wrap up the video guys. That means now that it's zero, we can happily say that XT equals theoretically Mm -hmm. Epsilon T and this can be extended to so recall that this is XT minus XT minus 1 so plusing this across we're going to have XT equals XT minus 1 plus Epsilon T and what we have here is a random walk and with drift or not there's no drift but this is an AR1 process thanks guys hope this video has helped and um, let me know if you need any more examples